So in this episode, we're going to talk about enumerators, uh, specifically the I enumerator and I enumerable interface, uh, and what makes them different from arrays. So the first step in understanding link queries, which is the ultimate goal here, is to understand I enumerable, uh, which is the first step in the process. After that, we'll learn I queryable, and then we'll show you some link expressions. So I want to first take a look at I enumerable and what makes it different than simple arrays, uh, and to understand what actually happens when you enumerate over something, uh, that it isn't happening instantly. It happens at the time of enumerating to the next object. So let's just jump into Visual Studio and start a project up uh, and take a look. So I've got here just a brand new console project to start uh, looking into the enumerables. So in order to talk about first what an enumerable is, uh, let's just do something that all of you have probably done, which is to create an array. So we just do say a new integer array. And let's just put one, two, and three in. So this is a standard array. I'm sure you all know what these are. Um, and then usually if you want to iterate over them or enumerate, you know, basically go through the list, if you will, go through each one and do something with, uh, that's typically called enumeration. You, you're going through a list and, you know, getting each item and then doing something with it. So in code, you typically do for each, and then you could say for each for a in array, and then console.writeline say uh, a is, and then just output the current value. And then just so we don't close here, uh, we'll just do read, read line, and then we have to press enter to close. So if we run this code now, you'll see we basically enumerate over this array. We go through one, two, and three, and output the value. So this for each, or as you might see it written as well, like for var i equals zero, i is less than array dot length, i plus plus, and then you do console dot right line, um, a is, and then you get it via indexing, so via array and then the index position. So you can do it either way, obviously the the typical way you prefer is the for each unless you need the actual array uh, position. So that's how you enumerate over an array. And what you might not know is an array is already an i enumerable, and that's why this for each works. So a for each works on any enumerable. So before we get into creating our own enumerable, let's first take a look at how and why this is already an enumerable interface. So we type array dot, and you'll see it's got get enumerator. So we type that just so we can click on it and press F12. It will take us to this method that states get enumerator and it returns an I enumerable. You can see we're in the array uh, namespace and if you scroll up, we're in the, the class array and it implements an I enumerable. And this is the thing we're talking about in this video now. Uh, so it obviously implements collections, lists, a bunch of other things, but specifically taking one piece at a time, we're talking about I enumerable. So an array already implements that. And if we go to an I enumerable and look at the interface, it simply has to implement this one function, which is to get an enumerator for this enumerable. So this enumerable is uh, something that can return an enumerator that can enumerate over values. So it might sound a bit confusing at the minute, but you'll see how it comes together. So all we have to do is to use a for each, the object in the for each, so in this case, this array, must implement I enumerable. If it doesn't, we can't use for each. Uh, but because it does, this statement basically compiles down to the exact same thing uh, as doing this. So you'd say for uh, enumerator, and you do equals array dot get enumerator. And then you do while enumerator dot get next, or move next rather. And you can see it returns a boolean, so true if there's another item to be had, if you will. So while it can get one, you can now do the console.write line. And this time, instead of being A, it's the enumerator uh, dot current. So get whatever the current value is. So this bit of code here is effectively synonymous to this code. That's basically all this for each does. So if you keep that in mind, this is the same code, if you will. So if we put enumerator A is, just so we've got the same, you can see the same output effectively, you see the same thing happening. It just enumerates over the array. 
So that's what we're basically doing in a for each statement, and that's that's what an enumerator does. So this get enumerator obviously just gets an enumerator. That's what the the method has to implement. But now the i enumerator has these three um, a property and two methods basically. So you call move next to say right, let's try and get the next value in this enumerable list. So in this case, it would get the first value here. It would return successful, and then once it's successful at the end of that call, this current should point to whichever object we're currently on as we step through. And then as you call move next again, it should set the current to this value, and then the, the dot current will then return this value. So that's all the array is doing, and that's all you know this for each does is replace it with this. So with that in mind, the next thing then is let's just create our own enumerable um, and to see. And you should also notice here as well, uh, which is kind of important, not necessarily in arrays because they're already in memory, the values already exist, but it's possible in an enumerable and in, in an enumerator to generate the values on the fly. So as you're stepping through, you're not necessarily um, reading all the values up front and then iterating through them. You might simply be generating them on the fly at that point in time, which is typical of an enumerator when you're accessing a database. And you select the first, say, million rows of a database, um, and then you want to step through them until you find the first one with a certain name. Um, you wouldn't want to read a million entries into the memory and then step through them in code. So an enumerator allows you to do that. It doesn't actually state that, um, you know, at that point in time, there's any predefined end. You can't say on the enumerator the length. So if you've got an enumerator, you can see there is no length. There's no known. You don't know when it's going to end. You just have to keep calling move next until it fails. Uh, the a reason an array has a length is if you press F12 on length, you'll see it takes you to an actual property in the class array itself. So the length property is, is defined in the array um, and not necessarily in the enumerable. So enumerables can be infinitely long and also only generate the results at the time have been asked for them here. So let's do that so you can see. Um, so let's just go below the main class and just do a public class and call it my infinite enumerator or my infinite enumeration. Uh, well, which way is it actually? It is um, enumerable. So my infinite enumerable, we'll keep the name in the same. And this will implement, we just scroll down, I enumerable. And then if we click on here, control dot, it will add the namespace using system.collections. Then we control click, uh, sorry, control dot on it again and press enter. It will tell us we need to implement this interface. So in our case, we're just going to return a new my infinite enumerator, which we'll now go and create. So that's all we have to do to have a value that we are um, enumerable over. So like the array object. So we're, we're cloning this array object, if you will. Um, and now we need the thing to step over the values. So if we do public class my infinite enumerator, and that implements i enumerator, you can see again if we do control dot and enter, it will throw us these three things we need to implement. So current can be, in this case, a get and a private set, and we'll set it to zero. And move next needs to effectively now get the next value. Well, in this, we haven't passed any values in. We're going to just generate them on the fly. And all we're going to do is infinitely increment this integer just to show you the, you know, the example and the point of th at this point in time is when, you know, the work happens and the code can generate the next value. So we'll just say the current value increases and we always have another value. So we are infinitely long. Um, this also, because we are a specific type, instead of just being generic here, you can do an enumer enumerator of a generic type. So we'll say we're specifically an integer. Um, control dot on that because it's in a different namespace. It's in generics. And then the same for this I enumerable. Let's, let's define that we are um, an integer. And we implement that interface, and you can see we have to return two. So if we just return the same thing for both. 
We now honor the generic version of it, so it gives us uh, a specific type here. So this could be now int as the type. Uh, the interface will be slightly different though. So if we just implement the interface, you'll see that we have uh, a dispose because we're now generics. It's, it's added to dispose. We don't need to do anything though. And it's added the underlying enumerator current, which will just return the generic specific type of current. So there's not much difference there. We've basically just added, uh, you know, a generic type. So we can say specifically we're expecting this enumerable type to be integer. So that the objects coming out of the enumerator are always integers. Uh, so now the current plus plus allows us to increment that um, integer, and we've always got the next one. Reset we could implement. So we'd expect that to say set current to zero. And that's basically it right there. So if we wanted to now do a for each on that, we could go here and do the same thing. So we could say var infinite enumerator or enumerable. I'll try to keep these words correct. Is new my infinite enumerable. And you see we're not passing any values in because in this case, the purpose of this is to show that we're just generating some infinitely long values on the fly. It's not given at any point in time. Um, and then from that, you could just do uh, for each var i in infinite enumerable. And then console.write line uh, i is, and then output i. And what you should see now, if we run this code, we should just get an infinite loop of numbers coming out. So you can see that's happening there now. So this is now an enumerable that will go effectively forever. It will just go all the way to int 32 max, and then it'll overflow, go back to zero, and carry on. So this will never end now. This will just keep going. Um, and what that's done, if you remember from the example above here, so instead of for each, if we did exactly the same here, so if we were to replace the for each uh, with the enumerator, so the enumerator could be the infinite enumerable dot get enumerator, which because we've implemented I enumerable, that does here. So when you enter a for each loop, the first thing it does is say, well, based on this value we've given it, get an enumerator for it. That gives it this class, which is the enumerator. And now to effectively enumerate over that list, we call the move next. So in the move next, it comes in and increments current by one. Uh, and then it returns true. So the very first value that will come out will be one because it started at zero, but it has to call move next to initiate the, you know, to know if there's even anything in this. There might be zero items. So it has to call it first. So our first value in this list would be one. Um, so that would be the move next returning true. And then at that point in time, we say, okay, get me the current. And the current at that point in time, because we have set it effectively existing, and when we move next, we just increment that value. We're simply getting that value. So if we were to run this and remove the for each, so you can see it being enumerated that way, you'll see it does exactly the same thing. It enumerates over. So that really is what an enumerator is. And it's really simple, like most other things. It seems like it might be complicated. It seems like if you're doing an array, and you do a for each, there's some kind of magic going on, or you've got now uh, an enumerable, and you're just doing for each on it, and you're not fully sure what's going on. This is all that's going on. So this is the entire thing right here. That's all that's happening. You, you're simply having an object uh, that can be anything you like. This class could do and be anything it liked at all. Um, and it simply implements this interface, I enumerable which has to return an enumerator. So that's all the first step does, is to tell the for each loop that it can say, here's the thing that's going to enumerate over my values. And typically in here, when you're returning an enumerator, you'd pass in the values at that point in time. So if this contained a list of values, say. So if we wanted a private, um, let's just do an array. So let's do a private int array. Um, and let's just make it um, my data and new array let's do four five six let's just have a predefined hard-coded set of data in this class and now to allow us to enumerate over that data we would normally pass that in to whatever enumerator you know wants to go through our values so with that now 
um, we need the um, constructor to accept an array of ints and then we'd want to store them so we just do a private int array m values and it will be m values equals values so now we have the values passed in current can then be the offset so we'd also have to have the index position so we'd say index starts at we start at minus one when we do move next which can now just implement uh, increment the index position will then start at zero correctly and now instead of returning true here we will simply return if the index value is less than the uh, values length so if the length is one there's one item in there zero is less than it as you move to the second item in the list this would be one one is not less than one so therefore it's out of range so this will now move next until it gets to the end of the array The values are set and the current now we need to simply update to be the m values m index so at any point in time we basically get the value at the current index array so if we change it this way around which is more conventional this is how you typically pass in some data and if we were to now enumerate over our um, list you can see now it's actually one two three four five six why is that um, oh, that's because let's just clear up the old array. Let's get rid of the array. There we go. Keep it clean so we don't get confused there. There's just this one now. And the infinite enumerable, there we go, is four, five, and six, and then it stops. So that's how you can also pass in specific data or simply turn whatever class has this data into an enumerable so it can be four each over. And the next step from this now is to go on to ultimately using link expressions to query objects and query lists of data uh, easier. Um, but hopefully that's all you need to know about enumerators. That there's not really much to say. We are basically just looping a bunch of values. Um, and it's just the way in which we do them by getting an enumerator, uh, which then does whatever it wants through these three calls to simply do move next to to set up whatever data it needs to calculate the next piece of information and set it ready and store it in current. And then the for each loop can get the current and the loop can just continue. And that's really all there is to it. It's it's a, a loop of move next, get the current value, move next, get the current value until there are no more values. That That's ultimately all it is. Uh, so hopefully that was you know a useful uh, explanation of enumerators. So that's our enumerables in a nutshell. Uh, there's nothing much to them. Hopefully now you understand them better than you did before and you can make use of them where you need. As always, if you've got any questions or comments, just ask them uh, and I'll see you in the next one.